Well, Tristan, I am indeed still with Mvula. However, he decided to move a little bit, and I'm now stuck between a male leopard and a hard place. I cannot move out of here. There's no way of going forward at all. But, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> he's boxed us in. So we're going to have to sit here until he eventually decides to move, I think. Uh, we've had such a wonderful sighting of him. He's completely relaxed around the vehicle. The pull, po the pull spotted owls are calling. Um, and I still can't get over the beautiful eyes of this male leopard. Really spectacular. Oh, I just want him to look at us. Look at that. Oh, isn't that amazing? Mad Candy, you asked, will the cats always remember their family or siblings? Um, they probably do, Mad Candy. Um, now, even though they're solitary, they, they will still recognize the scent of either offspring or, or parents. So they will still recognize the scent of, uh, of the, the family members. Excuse me a second. Go ahead, Andrew, go ahead. It's just myself, Andrew. You can make your way straight in. Um, yeah, animals lying out in the open at the moment. Just calling one of the other guys in quickly so they can also come have a good view. Um, so, Mad Candy, they would definitely recognize each other from their scent. Um, that's how most animals recognize one another. And whether or not they tolerate each other is another thing. But I have seen, um, and usually it's the male leopards that don't tolerate other leopards around. Um, but I have seen male leopards surprise us and tolerate their offspring and tolerate females. Um, but but generally, if there, if there's obviously if there's another male, um, then they wouldn't tolerate them at all. But if it's offspring or family, they potentially do tolerate them. Oh no, it looks like it's been such an amazing afternoon for everybody. So from elephant to leopard, and now we're going to go across to Scott with playful lion cubs.